tonight to talk about Zega and the opportunity to invest in Zega. So currently we're doing a capital raise for Zega targeting $250,000. Um, this is, it's pretty exciting actually. This is our first fully open, we call it open VC. So it's our first fully open to retail clients or retail investors, so anyone can invest in it. There are some, some pretty tight regulations around there. $10,000 is the upper limit if, if you're not wholesale. But um, so essentially we have a quite a low minimum. Uh, the minimum investment on Zager is $226.60, I think from memory actually at the, at the, at the unit price. Um, all of that information is available on our website. So venturecrowd.com.au. Uh, you'll see a little uh, a tile there that, that is to Ziga. You can click on that and go and have a look at all the information um, that's available, including a, a, a good pitch deck. And we'll cover off a lot of, a lot of this this evening. Um, so tonight on the webinar, I have our host is, is actually Alex Knight is joining me tonight and he's our investment manager at Venture Crowd. Alex is a finance and accounting executive, corporate advisor, funds manager, um, with expertise in mergers and acquisitions, capital markets and venture capital. Um, he's an experienced angel investor and venture capitalist. Alex invests in um, uh, and with partners in, in and with partners, high growth companies um, to help them develop and implement strategies to succeed. So um, he's, he's a good lad. I, I, I enjoy working with Alex. Um, we've also got Alex is joined by uh, Brendan and Brian actually. So Brendan is an experienced director and and is the tech and product development lead for Zega. He has 20 years experience in developing and manufacturing household consumer goods for the world's largest brands, uh, brand owners, retailers and innovators. He has held leadership roles for a New York Stock Exchange listed consumer goods company and QVC, the world, uh, the global leader in uh, TV retailing. Brian also joins us tonight and he's an experienced business consultant, advisory board member and senior exec in Sydney. He's held a variety of executive roles at large corporations, including the Sydney 2000 uh, Olympics organizing committee, Ericsson and Apple. So with that, why don't I hand over, we can get started. I'll hand over to you if you like, Alex, if you want to unmute yourself and we'll get started. Yeah, thanks, Jace. Um, very generous introduction there, mate. I really appreciate it. Um, before I do get onto the discussion we're having tonight with Brian and Brendan from Zega, just want to cover Venture Crowd and, and give a little bit of introduction there. So for those that don't know about Venture Crowd and are joining us for the first time or, or not joining us with little knowledge as to who we are, Venture Crowd is a digital investment platform that specializes in alternative asset investments. Um, specifically, that's venture capital and property development. And tonight we are focusing on the venture capital portion of our business. Um, so as of last month, we have over 61,000 registered members um, who have invested over 140 million with us at an average investment amount of 59,000. 57% uh, of our investors are repeat investors. And, and we're very proud of that because that means that they have invested with us more than once. And it goes to show that we have very loyal customers and loyal investors. Um, and because of that reason, we've also had a number of venture capital exits. So our first exit was JRod, um, that listed on the ASX generating 107% returns for our investors, which is fantastic. And that was just in 18 months. Our second was 40 Medical, and that generated over 300% in under two years. Um, so we're, we're very privileged and like the way that our investments have gone for our investors, and that does reinforce why our investors do reinvest with us. Now, our venture capital team is based in, in Brisbane, um, and we also have team members in Sydney and Melbourne. And we review hundreds of deals every year, hundreds of inquiries from our network, from our platform. Um, and we only select a very few to put forward to our investors every year and to launch on our platform. Now, the reason for that is that we're a purpose-driven purpose -driven business, and our mission is to find and fund the future. A future that's good for founders, good for investors, and good for humanity. So we really want to work with those companies that we think are driving those causes and that we think have a high chance of success for our investors. Uh, that's a good outcome for them and it's a good outcome for us. Um, so what that does mean in finding and funding better futures is that a lot of our companies um, meet some of the sustainable development goals. That includes affordable and clean energy, quality ed education, 
and good health and well-being, as well as increased access to technology. And that's where exactly that Zega sits. So before we dive into Zega and introduce our guests, I just want to touch on one more thing, and that's smart kitchens and where that market is. So the kitchen's really been at the center of our homes and family life for hundreds of years, but technology is changing the way we experience that time-honored tradition of cooking and feeding our families. The smart, the smart kitchen market represents a huge opportunity and is forecast to grow to over $6 billion by 2024. Now, that means over the next few years, the majority of our appliances that we use in our kitchen every day will be connected to technology in some way. And it will basically mean that they help us do the cooking, operate our kitchen, and in many cases, without us being there. Um, now, today we're talking to Zega, a company driving the future of smart kitchens that has created cookware that saves you time in the kitchen. The reason we like this story and we like this company is because of the large market I mentioned before, $6 billion and where it's heading, but most importantly, because of the team and execution behind Zega. So Brendan and Brian are joining us tonight. Uh, Brendan's the co-creator of The Magic Bullet. And in the early days, everyone thought that was just a blender. Now, 5 million units later, it's a household name. But I won't rub it on too much about that. And let's hear the story from Brian and ben, Brendan themselves. So Brian and Brendan, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So, mate, I just wanted to quickly cover off Zega um, and how it came about. Obviously, you were the co-creator of Magic Bullet. That went tremendously out in the market. You've got a long experience with consumer goods and retailing. Can you give me just a quick overview of Zega and how it came about? Sure, sure. sure. So uh, our team, we've developed and, and manufactured over 20 million products for, for some of the, you know, the housewares industry's biggest brands. And um, yes, we, we, we co-created the Magic Bullet Blender, which, and we went on to supply millions of those. And, and that, uh, that product became uh, the Nutribullet, which is uh, now being sold to DeLonghi for 460 million. But um, what we've been doing for the last two years is um, we've used all our knowledge in the housewares industry and working with these big brands. And you know, we've come up with a cookware product you know, that um, we saw the need for, for people to spend more time with their family and less time in the kitchen. And uh, you know, that's really what drove us um, to develop Zega. Yeah, thanks, mate. And I mean, there's the smart kitchen market. It's a huge market, right? And there's so many different products out there. At, at really the core of it, you, I think you touched on there, it's about saving time. But what is it that makes Zega different to all other products? The, the magic thing about Zega is that um, you, know, you, you put your food in the cooker as you would with other cookware. You put it on the stove, um, any type of stove at all, and uh, you let it heat up for five minutes. And after five minutes, you can just switch off the stove, walk away, um, you know, go pick up your kids from school or go for a run or go to yoga, uh, and your food continues to cook. So, you know, it's, it's walk away cookware. It saves you time in the kitchen. Um, it stops you slaving over a hot stove. Uh, it, it allows you time to do other things. You know, people are very time stressed at the moment. And it's good for the environment. It, it cooks your food without using any gas or, or electricity um, during the self-cooking phase. Yeah, that's fantastic, mate. I mean, I know how good or bad of a cook I am in the kitchen and all the help I can get is certainly needed. Certainly needed. Now, you did touch on there about the product development for Zega the last two years, and it's certainly a, an enabled product that has a lot of elements to it. Um, 2020 was also a challenging year for a lot of people and a lot of businesses. Can you tell me about 2020 and how this affected Zega? Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, COVID has, has really affected um, everybody's life around the world. Um, yeah, for us, uh, how it affected us was, you know, we were planning to, to launch into retail. Uh, you know, so we, we launched a product originally in Germany at Ambiente, one of the world's largest houseware show. And immediately after, and that was in February 2020. And immediately after that, of course, um, you know, the biggest markets in the world just shut down. So retail everywhere, everywhere um, kind of closed down. Uh, game changer. So what we decided to do was to, to pursue a digital uh, direct to consumer strategy, you know, and um, we test marketed uh, the product in uh, May in 2020. 
And, uh, you know, our test marketing was very successful. We decided to do a one month campaign on Indiegogo, which is an online platform in the United States uh, for 30 days. Uh, we sold that in the first two days. We reached our target in two days. So we know that we, we knew that we were onto something great uh, with Zega. After that Indiegogo test marketing, um, we decided to, to put the pedal down and uh, you know, launch online in the United States and in Australia, uh, direct to consumer, which we did in November uh, of 2020. So we've been live now selling direct to consumers for, for the last uh, five months and it's, it's, it's going really well. You know, we, we're, we're learning the customer journey. Um, you know, uh, our sales in the last few months are, are, are up 350% compared to what they were last year. And uh, it's, it's, it's going great. So 2020 was a tough year uh, in general for retail, but uh, you know it's uh, it's it's been good for us because it's uh, forces into to direct to consumer business, learning a lot about selling directly to customers online. Yeah, great. Thanks, thanks, Brendan. I mean, you know, going from sort of this strategy of getting Zega on the shelves, having it in distributors, having it physically on a store, and then you know with the changes that's occurred pivoting and seeing the the demand I think is is fantastic um, I know that Zag has had a fair few media appearances lately it's been featured on several publications which is actually on our website and platform as well uh, it's been on the today show you know review by news.com.au as well as several others 2gb to name it name a few you know what what has that done to your e-commerce strategy and what results has been coming out of that? Oh, it's the the it's driving the awareness that we're getting um, or via television and via newspapers and reviews uh, in Australia is uh, is really driving our, on, our online sales at the moment. So um, you know we've got some great reviews out there um, through our PR activity. Uh, you know you can see the product in AFR in uh, on news.com.au, like you said on the Today Show, and you know people are really seeing that this is uh, it's an incredibly unique. Uh, product in the market you know there's nothing else out there like it um, it's uh, you know cookware is, is is the biggest category in the homeware sector and uh, that's part of the reason why we choose to develop a cookware product uh, as our next uh, next big thing um, because it's it's just a huge addressable market you know so yeah we are getting we are getting a lot of um, a lot of media people are liking it uh, our customers are loving it um, you know, and uh, it's it's because it's so different. You know, it's uh, it's got this unique technology. Um, it's it's double wall insulated design. It's uh, you know, it's uh, it does the cooking for you. You know, and it's uh, it's it's getting a lot of attention because of that. So we we touched a little bit on the product and and the journey that you've come to to date. How twenty twenty sort of changed your strategy in getting this to market, and and really the most recent appearances because it's astounding the kind of attention that Zag has been receiving out there. Um, I do want to just shift into the current raise that we're doing with you, um, and what that means for Zaga and sort of what the funds are going to be used for. I think that might um, I might bring Brian into the conversation given his background and and more on the. Uh, the sales and, and development side. Brian, can you just outline, you know, we're doing it, we're aiming to target 250,000. You know, what, what are the, the use of funds for this raise and, and what does that mean next for Zega? Yeah, thanks, Alex. Um, well, I guess uh, the primary focus is to take the lessons learned here in the Australian market over the last five months, as Brendan was describing, and scale that up even further penetrate the Australian market even further, and also importantly, the US, um, and also add the UK as another key market. Um, so the primary allocation of funds will be supporting that scale up. So predominantly sales and marketing, um, inventory, some um, small amounts to IP development, um, and some working capital. Yeah, great. And because you're still focusing on an e-commerce strategy, that doesn't mean that your distributor relationships are falling by the wayside, correct? Not at all. We're anticipating that probably, uh, it depends on the market, of course, but we're anticipating in the, our key uh, markets that post-COVID recovery will start happening through the latter half of this year, um, at which point we would look to um, revitalize the distributor 
draft agreements that we um, put in place after Ambiente last year, um, and then leverage that um, recovery of the retail channel and retail markets. Yeah, so obviously with a, a hard product, as in like it's a it's a hard product getting to market, there's obviously supply chain, you're looking into an international market as well. Can you tell me a little bit about the supply and demand with Sega's products at the moment, focusing on e-commerce and then sort of moving back into, into retail in the future as well? Brendan, would you like to take that one? Sure, sure. So, um, yeah, at the moment, our, our primary focus is, is definitely e-commerce. And um, we're, we're, we're doing this because, um, you know, we really want to, to own all the customers. Um, we own as many of the customers as we can and to experience how they're using the product. And, um, you know, we think it's important to have a direct consumer business in today's environment. You know, it's, uh, it's, growing, it's growing so fast and we want it to be one of the pillars of our distribution. Um, that being said, um, you know, we do uh, plan to be an omni-channel company. So we want to touch customers uh, wherever they are. So if, if they're in retail or if they're on third-party marketplaces like Amazon or eBay, um, we will certainly be doing that. So our strategy is in, um, in the main English-speaking markets, which is Australia for us. We're an Australian company. Um, the United States, where we've already launched, and in the UK, where we're about to launch. Um, you know, we will do this, the distribution ourselves. Um, we will sell to retailers ourselves. We will sell online ourselves. And in other markets, let's say other big markets like Japan, Germany, uh, we will appoint distributors, local distributors uh, initially there. So, um, you know, just going back to the capital raise, the key thing for us is, is to scale up this business uh, more. Uh, and that's what we're going to be using uh, the, the, the capital for. Uh, the business has has had a lot of hard work behind it already. You know, we have set up two factories and uh, that are producing it. We've done a lot of, we finished all our software development. Um, we have a great team in India that helped us with that. And in the United Kingdom, um, you know, we have uh, set up distribution centers uh, in, in, in the United States and in Australia. And we're about to set up one in the United Kingdom. Um, the product's all patented now. Uh, it's and it's it's all there. You know, we're selling it. You can go online, you can buy it, and you'll have it in in a day or two. Um, the key thing, for, and it's and it's selling really well, especially in our home market, Australia. So the key thing for us now is to scale, uh, and is to spend more money on marketing and acquire more customers and make the business bigger. And uh, you know, that's that's the that's the key thing for us at the moment is is growth. So everything that we're doing at the moment is all about growth. It's about taking this product which is working well and growing the business as fast as we can. So using some of the, well, a lot of the capital raised to acquire customers, your growth, get more products in the hands of people, generate more raving customers. Um, what would that mean for Zager if it was to hit its three-year plans? Like where would Zager go next? Would, they, would it be an IPO? Would it be a trade sale? How would that look to you guys? Uh, it's 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 most likely, I think, in this industry to be a, a trade sale. So you know there there are a lot of multi-brand, large multi-brand housewares uh, companies in the industry, and um, there's been a lot of M and A activity. It's um it's a very fragmented uh, market. Um, but like I said, you know, one of the earlier projects that we worked on, the Magic Bullet, has just been sold. Um, the the parent company, Magic Bullet, has just been sold to. Um, DeLonghi for 460. Um, you know, one of the first app-enabled uh, products, SUV product uh, that came out, uh, Anova, you know, was sold recently to Electrolux at uh, six times revenue. Um, you know, this, there is, in, in, in the housewares industry, there is, there is a lot of um, acquisitions. It's very active. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of these trade sales going on. And we think that's the most likely uh, outcome for us is to sell the Zega brand to a larger trade in a larger trade sale, you know, in, in around three years time. And we would be looking for a four to six times revenue valuation of the business. So if we are, you know, if we're turning over uh, $25 million, for example, in, in, in three years, you know, we, we would be looking um, for at least $100 million. 
Yeah, I think it's important that you, you touch on the activity that's happening out there because that's certainly a trend that has been continuing even through COVID. So I think with more people spending time inside, more people using and buying these products through e-commerce strategies that you're implementing, it is increasing some of these companies tremendously and, and people are really uh, in the market are trying to hatch onto those. You did mention DeLonghi there and I think there's some other good examples as well with Hydro Flask that exited uh, at a three, a three to three times revenue, 12 times multiple, you know, over $210 million only a few short years ago. Um, Anova, Happy Call, you know, there is a lot of, um, there is a lot of companies that have exited directly in your consumer market segment. And that was particularly what interested in doing a raise for Zega. You really can see the growth and the pivoting that you guys did last year. And I think it's fantastic to be able to sort of cop it on the chin, stand back up, ride tall into the sunset and do what you can. Um, and now it's about getting you guys out of the gates and, and fueling it even further. Um, so that was one big reason that we thought was, was why we wanted to help you guys succeed and um, why we thought it would be successful for investors as well. Um, so I do see a question coming through there. Um, there is one question which, which kind of goes to what we just spoke about, Brendan. So in terms of sales figures um, in the last few months since the e-commerce strategy was implemented, can you just give us a little bit more insight, insight to those sales figures? Sure, sure. So we're, we're turning over uh, in, in Australia approximately $80,000 a month at the moment, but the growth is going uh, quite strong. Um, so like I said, this, this, this year, for the first few months of this year to March, the last numbers, we were 350 percent up and what our fourth quarter numbers were uh, last year and you know our, our plan is you know we're we're learning uh, what type of marketing what type of advertising works best for us and um, you know we're getting we're getting a positive return on advertising spend and that's the key thing so so uh, let you know how it works in in Australia if we spend one dollar on advertising you know we're getting four dollars in, in in sales and this is, these are the key metrics for us. So we got our marketing to a point now where with that type of return on advertising spend, we can scale up our advertising spend. So, you know, we are expecting if we spend $50,000 in advertising, various types of advertising, it can be, you know, PR activities, can be um, Facebook, Instagram, Google, et cetera. But we've got our strategy right at the moment, our media buying strategy right at the moment that we know if we spend $50,000 a month, on advertising, we can expect $200,000 in revenue. So our strategy going forward is to keep ramping up that spend and building the uh, customer awareness, you know, and, and using that um, positive return on advertising spend to allow us to make more impressions, make people more familiar with the brand, and then roll it into retail. And, you know, so many millions of people, so many millions of impressions will, will, will have been made that when the consumer walks into a retail store and they see um, Zega sitting there, they'll know all about it, you know, and, uh, and buy it. So this, this is really what we're doing at the moment. And this capital raise will only serve to fuel that and really scale that. And I mean, you mentioned there a four dollar return for each one dollar put in, but basically that's your your paid return, let alone all of the media and publication that you've received in the last couple of months, fueling additional consumer awareness of the product. Um, and you know, I was quite impressed by the news.com.au review and and what they were saying about the product. Um, I've got my hands on on one now, and I'll have to have to sort that out for myself. Um, I'm sort of coming to the end here, guys. I mean, we've touched on sort of your guys as a team, the background and where you've come from, the pivot in 2020 from, you know, going a retailer distributor model to more of an e-commerce digital strategy, um, the upside of the capital raise and where that can go. Is there anything else that you thought would be important to highlight about where you're at currently now, you know, what the future may hold or anything in between? I think the key thing, Alex, is that, you know, all the hard lifting has been done. Um, you know, we, 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 we've spent a, a tough few years, you know, developing the intellectual property, uh, setting up factories, setting up the, you know, the operational side <laughs> of the business and um, learning our marketing strategies. All of that's in, in place now. 
And, uh, you know, we have inventory uh, in, in market. Uh, we're selling day in, day out. The hard work has been done. What this capital raise is about is, is scale up. It's, uh, it's, it's all about growing the business. You know, the, the riskier times are past us. Um, you know, the product works great. It's getting great reviews. Um, we're set up and we're selling, you know, and now it's just about scaling the business up. Yeah, great. So I'll just touch on the capital raise before we close out with any questions and anything else. Um, so again, as Jason mentioned, this is actually Venture Crowd's first open VC raise. That means anyone can invest um, and you can invest right now from as little as $226. In saying that, if you do invest over $500, you're able to get a Zega product yourself for 50% off. And if you invest over $1,000, you actually get a free Zega product of your choosing. Now, it is open to everyone, retail and wholesale investors, um, but retail investors can only invest up to 10,000. If you do want to invest more than 10,000, you will need to get wholesale verified and our team can help you do that. Um, but I urge you, go check out the reviews on the deal page, go check out the awareness. Now that you've heard the story from Brian and Brendan, themselves um, and they're really ready and poised to scale the business go help them assist them and let's make Zager into the next magic bullet and get one on every kitchen in the future um, so Jason I might hand it over to you just to close out some of the formalities and um, we'll go from there thanks Alex thanks guys I, I, it is I'm gonna I've got a little poll actually so I might, I might just pop the poll out for everybody that is on the webinar tonight just to give me an indication of your uh your thoughts, that's a pretty simple poll. So I'll just pop that there. But please, um, if you've got any questions, pop them on there now. While we've got the guys, we can um, we can we can pop some questions straight out and, and deal with them now. Um, you know, look, as Alex and the guys have talked about, it's a, it's I, look, I think it's a cracking product anyway. I, I've got one. Um, it's um, it's actually sitting to the side of the stove tonight, and and dinner is. Uh, dinner will be nice and cooked by the time I finish here tonight. So that's pretty good. I reckon it kind of, I felt like that was, that was probably appropriate tonight before I jumped on the webinar here, spaghetti bolognese in there. So um, I'll get into that. And, and I'm an investor in Zega, right? So I think for me, it's like most of the things that you invest in, you invest in the things you enjoy or you like. Um, I like the team, right? But I like the product. I like cooking. So unlike you, Alex, right? I actually like cooking. Um, so kind of makes sense to me and I, and I I was talking with with Brendan and Brian yesterday actually about the um the first time I used it it was like I just could not believe how well it held the heat I couldn't believe how hot it was still so much later on that first meal I was like you know I, I love tech too right so I'm impressed with the app and the, and the recipes and all that connectivity I like that um but geez that um the double wall insulation is something else so I don't think, you know, I couldn't help be impressed with that. So look, you know, um, I think if there's any, it doesn't look like there's any further questions, but as Alex mentioned, the website has uh, adventurecrowd.com.au. It has the um, uh, the link to the deal page for Zega. It is fully retail, right? So it is open to everybody, low minimum. Um, Alex mentioned there, you can, you know, if you invest over a thousand dollars, then you can then you can get um, a, a Zega for free. I noticed somebody actually did that today. Um, so look, jump on there, please feel free. Look, if you, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to, to my team as well. Um, you'll probably find most of the answers like either within the webinar tonight or on the, on the deal page itself. But um, our number is 1300-039-655. Um, and I think probably with that, with no questions, I guess, Thank you very much to everybody for joining us and thanks to Alex and Brendan and Brian for, for joining us tonight and hopefully everybody's found it useful. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, Jim and Alex. Thanks, thanks Joe. Thanks, thanks, everyone. All the best. Thank you. Yeah.